Welcome friends, uh, welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on soil and water conservation engineering. I am Professor Rajendra Singh of Agriculture and Food Engineering Department, IIT Kharagpur. We are week, week number 3, today we are going through lecture number 12 and the topic is contour burns. Just to give you an idea about the course content of this week, uh, in previous lecture that is lecture 11, we introduced burns. In today's lecture, we will see through the concepts of contour burns, some of the design concepts as well. And then in following lecture, lecture number 13, we will utilize those concepts which we learned today for handling or tackling problems dealing with the design of contour burns. And in lecture number 14, we will go through graded burns and lecture number 15 then we will utilize the concepts learned in lecture number 14 for designing graded burns. So, let us uh, go through today's lecture. Now, we just gave you a brief idea in the previous lecture also, the contour burns involves construction of narrow based trapezoidal burns on contours for impounding runoff water behind them, so that it could gradually infiltrate into the soil. So, that simply means that they are trapezoidal, they are having trapezoidal cross section which is which you can see here, they are typically trapezoidal cross section and narrow based, narrow based means the base width is as narrow as possible from the stability point of view of course, it has to be because as we in the previous class we saw one of the drawbacks of uh, the contour burns or bunding is that results in the loss of uh, cultivable land. And as you can see that if this cross section is built here and here and here and if the base width is too much, then that means which will result in uh, higher amount of loss of cultivable land. So, that is why we always see that the base width of this is the base width, the base width of the uh, uh, contour burns are as narrow as possible. They are always constructed on contours and that is why named contour burn. Contour burn the name comes because they are burns constructed on contours. So, contour burn that is how the name comes and their primary function is impounding runoff water uh, behind them. So, primary function is storage of water. So, because of the construction uh, whatever rainfall occurs that gets stored here and obviously, because it is standing there for longer period of time. So, more and more of infiltration could take place besides checking erosion and flow of water. Contour burns are generally recommended like uh, any other uh, typically in burnt case also we saw that they are recommended for low rainfall areas which receive less than 700 millimeter of rainfall annually. So, any place where the rainfall rainfall is there is a 700 mm of rainfall we can go for contour burns and they are usually constructed on lands having 2 to 6 percent slope. We saw in the previous lecture there was an adaptability table which said that the land slope should always be limited to 8 percent. So, it can never be constructed for land slope having 8 more than 8 percent slope and usually usual recommendation is 2 to 6 percent of land slope. Now, some of the functions or advantages a series of such burns divide the area into strips. So, as you can see here uh, because they are constructed on contours. So, obviously, what is happening that entire land is getting divided into uh, narrow strips and obviously, uh, it checks the flow of water. So, as we have already seen that whatever rainfall will occur in between the area uh, occupied by two burns that is stored there. So, and obviously that is not allowed to flow. So, obviously the total flow or total amount of water which otherwise would have available would have been flown out of the area that is not there. In this case because they are constructing this direction which shows that the land slope is in this direction. So, if these strips would not have been there much larger amount of flow would have reached this point but in this case because of this uh, strips narrow strips which are where water gets stored the total amount of water which is available or flows that flows out is much less and of course the velocity of uh, the runoff is also checked because we are storing water in between these uh, 
uh, structures. And obviously, once the uh, amount of water is not allowed to flow, velocity is not there. So, obviously, the erosion is not there because if overland flow is not there, the sheet erosion process will not take place. Transportation of eroded material will not take place. So, that, how, that is how it checks erosion. And as far enhancement of infiltration is concerned, because water is standing for longer period of time in between two bond structures. So, that means more opportunity time is available for water to infiltrate and that means the total infiltration will be much larger and in effect it will result in ground water recharge. So, ground water will be recharged in wherever contour burns are constructed. Now, coming to design of contour burns, basically while designing contour burn, we need information on rainfall that is because we wish to know how much water needs to be stored or what is the maximum amount of water that is available for storing in between the burns. Then the land slope that basically it governs adaptability of course, that way we know that it should be less than 8 percent and normally between 2 to 6 percent and some of the design components also are governed by land slope. And of course, the type of soil, the soil texture and soil depth because it also is related to adaptability. Now, based on the soil type, once we know the soil type, a stable side slope, side slope means uh, this is typically this is the cross section we have seen. So, this is this is referred as side slope, the slope of the sides that is referred to side slope. So, we, we have to decide based on the soil type, we decide a stable soil slope uh, because the stability is a factor here. So, if, uh, if the soil is very sandy then obviously, we have to have a very, I mean if it is a clay soil then we can have a steep slope, uh, otherwise if it is a sandy soil then the slope has to be flat. So, the step from the stability point of view the soil types helps us in deciding the side slope. Subsequently, we calculate the vertical and horizontal intervals which basically govern the spacing between the uh, 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 consecutive uh, structures and then also we calculate the burn cross section. And when we say burn cross section, this involves base width, top width and burn height. So, if we consider this is a this is a typical cross section, then obviously, this is nothing but the burn height. Uh, this one is top width and the base width is this to this which we have already considered earlier this is base width. So, basically when we say construction uh, the cross section we have to decide on the height, the top width and the base width and of course, the spacing has to be decided. Now, the we use two terms vertical interval and horizontal interval which define the spacing between the uh, bunts basically. So, what are these? So, the vertical interval is the vertical distance between two successive bunts. So, if we take two successive lines of bunts and then we take any corresponding points in the two successive bunts it could be the upstream toe, it could be downstream toe, it could be center, whatever corresponding point you take. So, if you take the upstream toe, toe here, the same upstream toe has to be taken here. So, if we take two corresponding points and then we find out the vertical distance, the measure the vertical distance between these two, these two corresponding points that is referred to as vertical interval or the vertical spacing between two consecutive bunds. So, this is vertical interval. Then horizontal interval as the name itself suggests basically it is the horizontal distance between two successive bunds. So, in this case also we can take any corresponding point. So, if you accept for example, if you consider the downstream toe then for both bunds we have to consider downstream toe and if we draw the vertical lines here and then measure the horizontal distance between these two points that that is referred to as horizontal interval. And in this case uh, we had to draw the horizontal lines and then measure the vertical distance. 
So, horizontal line from two corresponding points measure the vertical distance that is vertical interval and vertical lines and measure the horizontal distance between two corresponding points that gives us the horizontal interval. And of course, V i and H i represent the spacing between the bunds. And the cross section already we have seen that when we say cross section it involves height, bottom width and top width. So, this, these are the various design criteria. This is the side slope uh, H is to V. Typical whenever we say side slope, we always represent H is to V. So, the typical convention of representing side slope is H is to V horizontal is to vertical. So, we will see little detail of this little further. Now, uh, about the bund height uh, con continuing design, the bund height should be sufficient to store the expected runoff from a rainfall event having 10 years occurrence interval. So, that means for designing ten these structures, the capacity is decided based on the rainfall event having 10 years recurrence interval that means the rainfall event which is likely to occur once in 10 years so that's uh, that's the that is how the the capacity of these structures are designed decided so the bund height includes the calculated depth of water corresponding to 10 year recurrence interval runoff and a free board provided to avoid the overtopping of bund so obviously when we say uh, this is uh, the if this is the bund cross section say for example. So, once uh, we know how much water to be stored. So, first we will calculate that. So, this could be let us say we call it h which is the depth of water and then uh, this is the theoretical depth which we calculate first and then in order to avoid overtopping, we provide some kind of a safety that is the that is referred to as free board. And typically, this free board is taken as approximately 25 percent of H. So, this H plus 25 percent of H that gives us the complete height of the height which is here, height of the bund. The bund design also includes estimation of contour length per hectare of land, which helps in estimating the total earthwork required and the cost of constructing the contour bund. So, obviously, uh, once we uh, have the cross section with us, when we know how many uh, the vertical or horizontal interval, then we can also find out uh, in a hectare of area, what will be the total contour length and that will tell us uh, knowing the cross section and the contour uh, length, total length, we can find out what will be the total earthwork required if you want to go for construction. So, if you know the unit cost of earthwork, we can calculate the total cost of earthwork and of course, uh, that will help us in finding out the total cost. Of course, uh, remember when we said the total economics is calculated, then not only the cost of earthwork, but the cost of land which is lost due to construction bond is also considered. considered. But as far as only the construction or implementing these Mm, measures are concerned, then obviously, we are more focused on cost of constructing these contour bonds. Then the side slope which we considered earlier, the, it comes into picture. The side slope depends on the nature of the soil. As, as I already mentioned, the stability of the dam or structure basically is governed by uh, the side slopes and may be taken from the following table. As I already mentioned, if it is clay, then we can have much steep slope. If it is a sandy, then we have to have flat slope. And when we say 1 is to 1 or 2 is to 1, as I already mentioned that we always use the convention H is to V, that is horizontal is to vertical. So, if we say 1 is to 1, that is 1 horizontal to 1 vertical, that means horizontal is horizontal is equal to vertical. So, if we say that 1 is to 1 means uh, h and v. Uh, so, h is equal to v, but in case of sandy soil when we say it is 2 is to 1 that means horizontal will be twice of v. So, 
h v will uh, h will be 2 times of v or in this case in the loam soil it h will be 1.5 times of v. So, that means h will be much uh, bigger. So, that means it will be much flatter structure and that means base width will be much larger. So, if it is a sandy soil then we have to have a very flat slope and that means in that case the base width will be larger. If it is a clay then we can go for a steep slope and then base width will be much smaller. Then for calculating the vertical interval uh, we have several formulae available. This is the general relationship it is given which is V i equals to S by A plus B where S is the land slope in percent. So, V i is represented as a function of S here and the constants A and B in this general relationship they represent the rainfall magnitude of a place and they can be assumed as follows that is for heavy rainfall areas A is given as 1 by 10 and B is 60 and for lower rainfall areas A is 1 by 15 and B is 60. In both cases V i will be in centimeters remember because it is the empirical equation and because these, these constant values are already given uh, in an empirical form. So, obviously, we have to always remember the units. So, S has to be in percent and the resultant V i will be calculated in centimeters if we use these values of A and B for heavy or low rainfall areas while using the general relationship. So, that we have to remember. As I said that there are alternates available. So, one of the formula which is given by uh, Ramsar that is also used for estimating V i and in this case V i is given as 0.3 s by 3 plus 2 there it was in terms of a and b here there are fixed values already given, but the change is that v i is in meters and s is in degrees. So, you have to remember v i is in meters s in degrees and here what happens that as you can see that v i is only taken as a function of land slope here. So, again in this case for soils having in order to account for the soil characteristics that is the soils having high infiltration and permeability and in order to take care of conservation practices or cover condition and good conservation practice V i is increased by 25 percent. So, considering only the slope we first calculate V i and depending upon the rainfall uh, infiltration characteristics, the soil characteristics and also the conservation practices V i is increased by 25 percent. But when the soil have low rate of infiltration or permeability and when the unfavorable cropping conditions are used then V i is decreased by 15 percent. So, in Ramsar formula one has to remember that first we use equation 2 to calculate V i and then knowing the uh, soil and uh, uh, crop cover conditions we have to either increase or decrease V i depending upon the conditions which are available. Then the other alternate is Cox formula which is probably the most popularly used uh, formula for calculating the vertical interval where V i is given as 0.3 x s plus y where V i is in meters and s is in percent. So, very convenient to use and x is defined as rainfall factor and y is infiltration rate and cover crop factor. So, here also x and y they take care of rainfall and soil and cover conditions and both x and y can be taken from standard tables are available. So, uh, just we can see the tables here uh, that uh, these are the values. So, values of rainfall factor x depending upon the rainfall that is whether it is scanty, moderate or heavy that means the magnitude are also given that is rainfall annual rainfall if it is less, less than 640 or around 640 it is referred to as scanty in between 640 and 900 it is moderate greater than 900 is heavy the values of x vary from 8.8 to 0.4. But remember typically we limit uh, the rainfall to 700 millimeters while desiring the bunts, but in odd cases it may, may be also designed for heavy uh, rainfall areas. Then similarly values of y which are based on integrate and crop cover then if integrate is below average and cover condition is low 
then the value of y is 1. If the intake rate is above, above or average, average or above and cover condition is good, the value is 2 and one of the above factors favorable the other unfavorable that means the if it is below average but good cover or average or above but low cover then we take a value of 1.5 so depending upon the rainfall conditions and based on the soil and cover conditions we can take x and value from x and y value from here and then we can use the cox formula for calculating the vert vertical interval and as i said that is, this is one of the quite popular formulas which are used then comes uh, the design of uh, uh, the horizontal interval. A horizontal interval basically depends on the land slope and estimated by this relationship. So, basically uh, when we say s percent, so that means the land slope is this is s percent and that simply means s meter over 100 meter basically it means that is s percent means s meter suppose we unit is meter. So, s meter over 100 meter or s units over 100 units that simply means what that if it is 1 unit then it will be 100 by s. If it is 1 then it is 100 by s. So, that is why when it is v i then if it is v i then this becomes 100 s times v i. So, from this very this simple relationship itself. So, you do not have to remember basically h i equal to v i is into 100 knowing this relationship we can always find out what is the relationship between h i and v i. So, v h i once v i is known h i v can be calculated very easily using this relationship. Then comes uh, uh, once the vertical and horizontal intervals are estimated then comes uh, the burn cross section and uh, obviously, we start with the height of the bund and the height of the bund is decided based on the amount of water that is to be stored behind the dam. That means, we have to know how much rainfall will occur and how much water that needs to be stored behind the dam and for that uh, we just we are considering this uh, definition sketch that h is the height of the bund that is this is h is the height of the bund. H i is the horizontal distance between two successive bunds that is here. W is the width of water is spread behind the bund this is the W here and V i is the vertical interval between two bunds. So, obviously, this is always the uh, diagram which will be built uh, because in between two bunds this will be how the condition will be. So, this is a definition sketch if we consider then obviously, we can take this little further. So, based on this figure we have two triangles one is triangle this is one triangle triangle C D E and the other larger triangle is A B C. So, from figure based on the principle of similar triangle triangles that is basic uh, geometry W by H i is equal to H by V i that is the principle of similar triangles and from here w is can be said as h i times h is equal to b i and the amount of water that can be stored behind the dam that is basically the area of this triangle. So, it obtained behind the bond per unit length that is the total volume of water if we talk about then obviously, that is r e times the h i because basically if what we are saying is that we have here and we have another section another bund here. So, this is the water we are retaining. So, if we consider this figure here and so obviously, from this point itself this is this is basically we are talking about this two triangles here. This is one triangle larger triangle and this is smaller single. So, this we are saying is h, this is w, this is v i, this is h i that is same thing we are talking about and that simply means the total volume of water that can be stored is the total rainfall that is occurring in between this, uh, this h i. So, that is the total uh, horizontal interval which is available for storing the water and uh, so that that is r i times h i into 1, 1 is perpendicular to the board. So, this is the total volume of water 
that can be that needs to be stored. So, what we have two things one is that the volume of water that can be stored or the total water that can be amount of water that can be stored volume we are not saying because it is a unit length we are talking about and this is the total water that needs to be stored. So, that means this and this has to be equal and if we equate this then from equation 6 and 7 half h square h i v i is equal to r e h i or h is equal to 2 square root of 2 r e v i. So, v i is the vertical interval r is the amount of excess rainfall over 24 hours. So, if we know these two then based on that we can calculate the height of the bond and also this is only the theoretical h and we already considered that uh, in order to avoid overtopping we also add a free board and this free board may be taken as 25 percent of s. The total height of the bond will be h plus 0.25 h in order to that is the total height of the bond which we can calculate. And then once the height of the bond is calculated then obviously, we will have uh, the cross section and the cross section is very simple it is a trapezoidal section. So, the uh, total area is half base width plus top width into height. So, the sum of this and this divided by 2 times height that is the total area. So, under Indian conditions the top width and the bottom width are typically uh, fixed as are recommended as 0.5 meters and 2 meters. So, one can always calculate these values, but suppose you want to use the thumb rules then the top width could be taken as 0.5 meters and the bottom width could be taken as 2 meters, uh, but in any case for stability purposes the cross sectional area of the bund should be minimum 1 square meter. So, this is a uh, this is a catch. So, if you want to use this 0.5 meters and 2 meters then your height is uh, should be such that the total cross sectional area is more than 1 square meter. So, this is what we have to remember. So, height once we have calculated height we can also calculate uh, the top width and the bottom base width, but at the same time we can also use the uh, typically recommended values for Indian conditions uh, for developing the cross section. Now, coming to uh, design of contour bonds continuing with there are certain other dimensions also uh, which we need to calculate and that is length of bond per hectare of land. So, once we have calculated the, the horizontal interval and we know per unit area um, I means uh, 1 hectare of land has 10,000 uh, square meters. And uh, so, length of will be total length will be 10,000 square meters divided, divided by horizontal interval in meters that will give us the total length. And uh, uh, we all also know the relationship between h i and v i. Uh, so, by putting that uh, h i equals 100 v i into s in this equation we will be able to get L equals to 100 s by v i. So, once we have calculated v i s is already known. So, length of the bond per hectare of land is also can also be estimated using equation number 9. Then coming to earthwork computation and area lost, the earthwork for bonding includes main contour bond and side and lateral bonds. We have already seen side and lateral bonds, these are the uh, lateral bonds and the side bond could be just limited on either side. So, depending upon the condition there could be side bonds, there could be lateral bonds and all these bonds are assumed for ease of calculation uh, may have the same cross section. So, that is assumption that the main bond here and then the side and lateral bonds they will have the same construct uh, cross section that is a basic assumption could they could differ also. So, earthwork computation in uh, area loss basically the length of side and lateral bond they are typically assumed as 30 percent of the length of the contour bond. So, from equation 9 the length of contour bond per hectare is L equals to 100 s by V i. So, the total length of bond will be 30 percent added that is 130 s by V i. So, that will be the total length of uh, bond per hectare including the lateral and side bonds. And if you take the into account the total earthwork that will be required will be the total length of the bond per hectare into cross sectional area that is 
for each uh, bund we have already calculated the cross sectional area. So, total length times cross sectional area will give us the total earth work and the area lost per under the contour bund can be calculated by multiplying the length of the contour bund per hectare with its base width because that is the base width uh, if we consider uh, anywhere this is the area which we are basically losing on the ground uh, actual field. So, this base width is taken into consideration. So, the total area lost per hectare will be 100 s by v i which is the total length of the contours times the base width uh, of the contour bund. And like in the earthwork calculation here also we need to add 30 percent of the area lost due to uh, side and lateral bunds. The total area lost will be 130 s by v i into b like in the case of earthwork. So, to uh, once uh, we have const, const, uh, decided various cross sections when we know the cost of work earth then lastly it comes to alignment and construction of uh, contour bund. So, for alignment and construction of contour bunds we first need the plan or the map of the area. So, that may, map may be readily available with us or we can go for plain table survey if the mat is not available. In today's time, we can also use uh, digital elevation maps or ArcGIS software for creating the maps. Uh, uh, so, and on the map of course, all natural fe features like streams, gullies, field boundaries they have to be shown. So, the complete map is first uh, either it has to be available or this has to be created for uh, alignment and construction of contour bonds. And once uh, the map is the area, then we divide the area of uh, total area of the map into blocks of suitable sizes that is for ease of um, uh, management from management point of view. And then on each blocks location of contour bonds are marked. So, basically uh, we require contour, contour we have to generate the contours or we can always have uh, uh, the contours lines are if already contours are already identified. If we have a contour map with us, then we can straight away use the direct contour method uh, for locating uh, the uh, contour bunds because they are always they will always follow the contours. And the alignment of bunds should be start from the ridge line of the area that is the from the top, and the first band is located directly in the field. After that, the field is smoothened to avoid undesirable surface irregularities and the position of second and subsequent bund is then marked as per plan. So, we know horizontal interval, vertical interval. So, what we do is that first mark if this is the total, this is the total area and let us say that uh, this is the slope and that means we have to construct our bund in this direction and so if our contour is marked here contours is marked here. So, obviously, when we say ridge line that means, we have to start construction from this side and then we do some kind of a smoothening on this entire area and then once uh, smooth land is smoothened then knowing the location of this knowing the horizontal interval vertical interval we can decide on under also the contour line we know what should be the location of the second line third line and so on. So, this is how the contours can be uh, located and built in the field. So, in this lecture we have seen what are contour bonds, what are their functions, how to decide uh, the horizontal inter vertical interval, how to calculate, how to calculate the cross section especially the height of the bond by using the principle of uh, similar triangles and uh, then what will be the total length of contour per hectare, what will be the total area lost uh, because of the contouring and how to align them we have seen that and then uh, in the next lecture we will take up certain problems uh, uh, where we will see how to apply these principles which we have learned today for uh, designing the contour bonds. Thank you very much.